Home, read by Mrs O'Hanlon. Mum and I didn't talk much on the way home, and when we got to the front stoop, I automatically looked in the front bay window, because I forgot for the second that Daisy wasn't going to be there like always, perched on the sofa with her front paws on the windowsill waiting for us to come home. It made me kind of sad when we walked inside. As soon as we did, Mum dropped my duffel bag and wrapped her arms around me and kissed me on my head and my face like she was breathing me in. It's okay, Mum, I'm fine, I said smiling. She nodded and took my face in her hands. Her eyes were shiny. I know you are, she said. I missed you so much, Oggy. I missed you too. I could tell she wanted to say a lot of things, but she was stopping herself. Are you hungry? she asked. Starving. Can I have grilled cheese? Of course, she answered and immediately started to make the sandwich while I took off my jacket and sat down at the kitchen counter. Where's Via? I asked. She's coming home with Daddy today. Boy, did she miss you, Oggy, Mum said. Yeah, she would have liked the nature reserve. You know what movie they played? The Sound of Music. You'll have to tell her that. So do you want to hear about the bad part or the good part first? I asked after a few minutes, leaning my head on my hand. Whatever you want to talk about, she answered. Well, except for last night, I had an awesome time, I said. I mean, it was just awesome. That's why I'm so bummed I feel like they ruined the whole trip for me. No, sweetie, don't let them do that to you. You were there for more than 48 hours and that's the awful, and the awful part lasted one hour. Don't let them take that away from you, OK? I know, I nodded. Did Mr Tushman tell you about the hearing aids? Yes, he called us this morning. Was Dad mad? Because they're so expensive. Oh my gosh, of course not, Oggy. He just wanted to know that you were all right. That's all that matters to us. And that you don't let, let those thugs ruin your trip. I kind of laughed at the way she said the words thugs. What? she asked. Thugs, I teased her. That's kind of an old-fashioned word. OK, jerks, morons, imbeciles, she said, flipping over the sandwich in the pan. Cretinos, as my mother would have said. Whatever you want to call them. If I saw them on the street, I would... She shook her head. They were pretty big, Mum, I smiled. Seventh graders, I think. She shook her head. Seventh graders? Mr Tushman didn't tell us about that. Oh, my goodness. Did he tell you how Jack stood up for me, I said. And Amos was like, bam, he rammed right into the leader. They both crashed to the ground like in a real fight. It was pretty awesome. Amos's lip was bleeding and everything. He told us there was a fight, but, she said, looking at me with her eyebrows raised, I'm just, phew, I'm just so grateful you and Amos and Jack are fine. When I think about what could have happened, she trailed off, flipping the grilled cheese again. My mum too could he got totally shredded. Well, that can be replaced, she answered. She lifted the grilled cheese onto the plate and put the plate in front of me on the counter. Milk or white grape juice? Chocolate milk, please. I started devouring the sandwich. Oh, can you do it that special way you make it, with the froth? How did you and Jack end up at the edge of the woods in the first place, she said, pouring the milk into the tall glass. Jack had to go to the bathroom, I answered, my mouth full. As I was talking, she, was, she spooned in the chocolate powder and started rolling a small whisk between her palms really fast. But there was a huge line and he didn't want to wait. So we went towards the woods to pee. She looked up at me while she was whisking. I know she was thinking we shouldn't have done that. The chocolate milk in the glass now had two inches of froth on the top. That looks good, Mum, thanks. 
And then what happened, she said, putting the glass in front of me. I took a long drink of the mi chocolate milk. Is it OK if we don't talk about it any more right now? Oh, OK. I promise. I'll tell you all about it later when Dad and Via come home. I'll tell you all, every detail. I just don't want to have to tell the story over and over, you know? Absolutely. I finished my sandwich in two more bites and gulped down the chocolate milk. Wow, you practically inhaled that sandwich. Do you want another one? She said. I shook my head and wiped my mouth with the back of my hand. Mum, am I always going to have to worry about jerks like that? I asked. Like, when I grow up, is it always going to be like this? She didn't answer right away, but took my plate and glass and put them in the sink and rinsed them with water. Ah, oh, there's always going to be those jerks in the world, Oggy, she said, looking at me. But I really believe, and Daddy really believes, that there are more good people on this earth than bad people. And the good people watch out for, the, for each other and take care of each other. Just like Jack was there for you. And Amos and those other kids. Oh yeah, Miles and Henry, I answered. They were awesome too. It's weird because Miles and Henry haven't, haven't even really been very nice to me at all during the year. Oh, sometimes people surprise us, she said, rubbing the top of my head. Hmm, I guess. Want another milk of chocolate? Want a glass of chocolate milk? No, I'm good, I said. Thanks, Mum. I ac Actually, I'm kind of tired. I didn't sleep too good last night. You should take a nap. Thanks for leaving me, Babu, my, by the way. You got my note, she smiled. I slept with him both nights. She was about to say something else when her cell phone rang and she answered. She started beaming as she listened. Oh, my goodness, really? What kind? She said excitedly. Yep. He's right here. He was about to take a nap. Want to say hi? Oh, OK. See you in two minutes. She clicked it off. Ah, oh, that was Daddy, she said excitedly. He and Vera are just down the block. He's not at work, I said. He left early because he couldn't wait to see you, she said. So don't take a nap quite yet. Five seconds later, Dad and Vera came through the front through the door. I ran into Dad's arms and he picked me up and spun me around and kissed me. He didn't let go of me for a full minute until I said, Dad, it's OK. And then it was Via's turn and she kissed me all over like she used to do when I was little. It wasn't until she stopped that I noticed the big white cardboard box that they had brought in with them. What is it? I said. Open it, said Dad, smiling. And he and Mum looked at each other like they knew, knew a secret. Come on, Oggy, said Via. I opened the box. Inside was the cutest little puppy I've ever seen in my life. It was black and furry, with a pointy little snout and bright black eyes and small ears that flopped down. Bear. We called the puppy Bear because when Mum first saw him, she said he looked just like a little bear cub, I said. That's what we should call, call him. And everyone agreed that that was the perfect name. I took the next day off from school, not only because my elbow was hurting, which it was, but so I could play with Bear all day long. Mum let Via stay home from school too, so the two of us took it in turns cuddling Bear and playing tug of war with them. We had kept all of Daisy's old toys and we brought them out now to see which ones he'd like best. It was fun hanging out with Bear all day, just the two of us. It was like old times, like before I started going to school. Back then, I couldn't wait for her to come home from school so she could play with me before starting her homework. Now that we're older, though, I'm going to school and have friends of my own that I hang out with. We never do that anymore. It was so nice hanging out with her, laughing and playing. I think she liked it too. 
The shift. When I went back to school the next day, the first thing I noticed was that there was a big shift in the way things were. A monumental shift, a seismic shift, maybe even a cosmic shift. Whatever you want to call it, it was a big shift. Everyone, not just in our grade, but every grade, had heard about what had happened to us with the seventh graders. So suddenly, I wasn't known for what I'd always been known for, but this other thing that had happened. And the story of what happened had got bigger and bigger each time it was told. Two days later, the way the story went was that Amos had gotten into a major fist fight with the kid and Miles and Henry and Jack had thrown some punches at the other guys too. And the escape across the field became this whole long adventure through a cornfield maze and into the deep, dark woods. Jack's version of the story was probably the best because he's so funny. But in whatever version of the story, and no matter who was telling it, Two things always stayed the same. I got picked on because of my face. And Jack defended me and those guys, Amos, Henry and Miles, protected me. And now that they'd protected me, I was different to them. It was like I was one of them. They all called me Little Dude now, even the jocks. These big dudes I barely even knew before would knuckle punch me in the hallways now. Another thing to come out of it was that Amos became super popular and Julian, because he missed the whole thing, was really out of the loop. Miles and Henry were hanging out with Amos all the time now. They like switch best friends. I'd like to be able to say that Julian started treating me better too, but that wasn't true. He still gave me dirty looks across the room. He still never talked to me or Jack but he was the only one who was like that now, and me and Jack, we couldn't care less.